Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the latest version of RetroArch as of September 2021. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the time of recording, we are currently using 1.9.10 and we are going to have to do a couple different things differently to set this up. But thankfully, the process has gotten a little bit simpler with every version. So the first thing you need to do to actually install RetroArch on your Xbox is install dev mode. It's really easy to do. However, it is not free. It costs around $20. I'll be walking through the whole process in today's video, but this is an important thing to keep in mind. I'm going to be showing you step by step first how to do this process. And then later in the video, I'll be showing you step by step how to install RetroArch using this process that we set up earlier. So the first First thing I need to do for today's video is of course have your Xbox turned on. Right now we're going to be starting from our dashboard and what we're going to be doing is clicking Y or search on our controller. In this keyboard pop-up that pops up, we're going to be typing in dev kits and we're going to be scrolling up here and I'm going to be clicking on the green one right here that has the two pictures of the Xboxes on top of it. I'm going to be clicking get, simply clicking A on our controller. It's then going to say congratulations, we got it. And then this is going to start installing right away. From this point, I'm going to be clicking A to view the progress and we can see it's starting to download. It's around 100 megabytes in size, so it should only take a couple seconds to download. Once it's downloaded, what I'm going to be doing is coming back to my dashboard. I'm going to be coming down to my apps and games. I'm going to be coming down the left. I'm going to be coming to the app section and I'm going to be selecting the dev mode app that we just downloaded. I'm going to be opening this up. And here we're going to go down a process of actually creating a dev mode inside our console, which is going to allow us to install custom content and apps. So we're going to be able to install RetroArch inside our Xbox. At this point, I will also mention that when we actually put our Xbox in dev mode, it will not overwrite or delete anything from our system. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. However, you are going to need to have at least five gigabytes in the storage space. So I'd recommend to have at least 20 to 50 gigabytes for us to comfortably install RetroArch and have a little bit of wiggle room here while setting up our Xbox in dev mode. What we're going to have to do is once we get to this screen, we're going to have to click next twice until we get to the activate console section where we will then get a code and a link on screen. So what we're going to have to do from this point is come over to any desktop PC. And what we're going to be doing is entering in this URL that we see right here on screen. And most likely when you first come in here, you will be asked to log into your Microsoft or Outlook account. In this case, I've already logged in here. What we're going to be doing is scrolling down here until we see the developer programs right here. And we're going to be clicking on Windows and Xbox. And we're going to be clicking the get started button right here. Once this opens up, we'll be brought to the sign up page for this. And what we're going to have to do is come here to this page, come over to the right, and we're going to be clicking on the sign up link right here. Once this opens up, you are going to have to set up all your account information. Now they do ask for a couple different things here. First is your location. Then you have to choose an account type, either an individual or a company. In this case, I am an individual, so it's going to cost me around 14 euro. Or if you're a company, it's going to cost around 75 euro. This will vary depending on your location and your currency. However, it is really easy to set up here. And then all you need to do is enter all of your contact and information below. I'm not going to be putting this on screen. I'm actually going to be skipping to when my account is created, but it shouldn't take too long. It's really easy to set up all this. Once all your information is entered, we're going to have to accept the terms and conditions, and then we're going to be able to click finish, and then we're going to be redirected to the registration confirmation page. From here, we can go back to our dashboard where we can get some more information about our account. But from this point, we're actually not going to be staying here, and we're going to be going back to the link that is found on our Xbox. Again, I'll be leaving this link in the description down below. Now, from this point here, we'll be brought to the manage Xbox One console screen. And here below this, we should see a list of all currently added Xbox consoles. So once we get to this screen, what we're going to be doing is clicking on the plus button on the right. We're going to be clicking the enter activation code button. And then this pop up will appear. Now, what we're going to need to do from this point is come back to our Xbox and we're going to be grabbing the activation code that showed up here before. Now, if you've left your Xbox idle for a while, you might get this button to get a new code. All we need to do is connect up our controller again, click A to get a new code. And we're going to be taking this code and we're going to be entering it into our web browser so that it matches up correctly. Once your code is entered, we're going to click submit and then our code and information will be entered into the web browser. Now, if we come back to look at our Xbox, we can also see now instantly it's going to start activating and we're going to start activating this Xbox as a developer account Xbox. Now, from this point, if we come back to our Xbox, we'll see this screen right now to switch to developer mode. What we'll have is two options, switch and restart, which is going to automatically restart it as a developer account. We're going to be simply clicking switch and restart. And then this can take a bit of time while our Xbox switches and restarts into developer mode. So once your console has fully reset, you'll be brought to the dev mode UI like you see I have on screen right now. The next issue I had was for some reason I couldn't connect to Xbox Live. I think that's because I'm using a wireless connection. If you're having a wired connection, I don't think this will be an issue. So to fix this, what we need to do is come to our settings here on the left, come down here to launch settings. We're going to be coming to network settings and then we're going to be setting up a wireless network. So basically the dev mode version of the Xbox account is going to act like a brand new Xbox. So we basically need to set up our wireless connection again. Once your wireless network is back up, if we come to our homepage, we should see the Xbox Live is now up and running and that is an important step. We're going to need to have that up and running before we do anything else. 
So the next thing we're going to be doing is upgrading the available storage in our dev mode in our Xbox Series S or Xbox Series X. This is going to be really useful if you want to play bigger games such as PS2 or Wii games or any games that require multiple files as multiple files at once can't be loaded from an external drive. To do this, what we need to do is load up dev mode as we have right now. We're just going to be starting from our homepage. We're going to be clicking the start button. We're going to be coming down to manage dev storage. And by default, it's going to be set to five gigabytes. I would recommend doing at least 25 or closer to 50, depending on how much content and how many big games you try to transfer over. This can determine how much you want to give here. For me, I'm going to put 30 gigabytes here, but you can feel free to experiment whatever makes sense. Whatever you put here will take away from your normal retail mode. So that's something to keep in mind. You might want to create a good balance here. Now to mention the available storage here is what's currently available on your SSD, not what's available on your SSD as a whole. So if you go back to retail mode, uninstall some games and then come back here, you can feel free to update it to even more to allocate more space. So depending on what you want to do, you can experiment here. But for me, I think around 30 gigabytes will be a good starting size. Once you're happy, you simply come down one, click save. You'll then have to restart for these changes to come into effect. Simply click restart. And just like that, you have upgraded the internal storage on your dev mode on your Xbox series. S or your Xbox Series X. Once your device portal and dev mode is fully set up, we're going to be heading over to the RetroArch website. As always, links in the description down below. And here we're going to be downloading the latest version of RetroArch for our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. To do this again, we're going to be coming to the website. We're going to be clicking on the download menu item here. And from this point, we're going to be scrolling down until we see the Xbox Series slash one. And here we're going to be downloading the latest version for Xbox. We're simply going to be coming here. We're going to be clicking download. And we're also going to be needing a second installation file with this as well that we're going to be needing to attaching to our RetroArch, which is the Visual Studio Runtime Libraries file right here. We're going to be clicking this. And we're also going to be saving this as a download as well. From this point, we're going to need to load up our Xbox Series X. And we're going to need to know the IP address for the remote access on the bottom right. From this point, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be locating to the URL that we had set previously from our Xbox. I have just logged in and I'm right here right now. We're going to be coming to the home section and we're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps right here. We're going to be clicking add and we're going to be adding a new file. The first thing we're going to have to select and install is the actual device application package. So we're going to be opening back up our files and this is going to be the RetroArch UWP right here. We're just going to be dragging and dropping this in here. We're then going to be clicking next and we can choose any dependencies. And here we're going to be selecting our Microsoft visual file. We're going to be dragging and dropping this in here. And then we're going to have both of these files set up. From this point, we simply need to click start. And then we just need to wait for the installation process, which can take a couple seconds to a minute. So we just need to be patient until this is done. Once your package is fully installed, you'll get this pop up. We simply need to click done. And just like that, RetroArch has now been installed on our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. From this point, there is one extra step I would recommend doing. It is optional depending on what you want to do, but it is to install My Files Explorer. I would recommend it in 99% of cases. It will also allow you to easily back up some files over on your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. So that's the next thing I'm going to be showing you in today's video is how to install My Files Explorer. This is come to this link. As always, links is in the description down below. And what we're going to be doing is downloading a File Explorer application that we're going to be installing on our Xbox Dev Portal. So come to this link, simply click download, and then your download will begin. Once your download is done we're going to be coming back to our xbox dev portal we're going to be coming to the my games and apps on the home section right here we're then going to be selecting the add button here and we're going to be choosing our my explorer file.appx that we just downloaded previously click open select your file select next then select start and then your file will start to install now this can take a couple of seconds before it fully installs and opens up on your xbox and just like that the file should be installed so once that's done, what we're going to be doing is coming down to the games and apps section right here. Once you're over on your Xbox and we finally have our RetroArch installed, we're going to be coming to the app right here on the home screen. We're going to be clicking our select or menu button, the button with the two boxes here on the left of our controller. We're going to be going to view details and we're going to need to make sure our UWP is set from app. Instead, we're going to be changing this to game. And this is so we can fully utilize the full power of the GPU on the Xbox. So we need to make sure this is set to game. Just like that, we have our RetroArch ready to go. From this point, we're simply going to be clicking the A button to launch RetroArch arch and this can take a second or two to launch us up from this point retro arch might look a little bit weird compared to what it normally does but we need to set up a couple of different things to actually update everything and we're going to be setting up retro arch as it should be in normally from this point we're going to be staying on our main menu here on the left we're going to be coming down to the online updater and we're going to be updating a couple of things in our retro arch for me i'm going to be going down the list and updating most of the things one by one so the first thing we're going to be doing is updating the core info files we will see the information pop up on the bottom left and this is the current status we're going to be clicking downward. We're then going to be updating the assets. And here's where we're going to see a big change in RetroArch. It's now going to update all the fonts, all of the icons, and RetroArch is going to look a lot more normal. 
just like that it looks a lot better we're going to be updating the controller profiles you can update cheats if you want so i would recommend doing this when you have a little bit more time to actually update everything we're going to be updating the databases we're going to be updating the overlays if you plan to use them although they are quite short downloads so i'm going to be updating those as well and then finally we're going to be updating slang shaders again only if you plan to use shaders would i recommend doing this but again it is a short download so you can do this quite easily as well so once you have all this set up there is a couple of other settings i would recommend taking a look at to just improve our retro x experience the first thing i'm doing is coming to the left we're going to be coming to settings and we're going to be coming in here a little bit further so the first thing i would do is come down to full screen mode and i would make sure that full screen mode is enabled this is just to make sure that everything is start and run in full screen just to make sure this is enabled from this point we're going to be backing out of here we're then going to be scrolling down to inputs and we're going to be scrolling down until we see hotkeys and we're going to be looking for the menu toggle controller combination and here we can set up and choose exactly what menu combination we want to press when we're in games to open up the retro arch menu so for me i like to use down and select but you can feel free to set up whatever combination key here you like the most whichever one you can remember for me i always use down and select so i'm going to be continuing with that so the next thing i'm going to be talking about is the actual interface so at the moment we are using the latest ui version of retroarch although i have had some requests for some users who want to go back to the original ps3 kind of layout if you would like to do this we can come here to the user interface option we can then come down to the menu and here you can choose of a couple of different options ozone glui rgui or the xmb so if you would like to go back to the original ps3 layout you can choose xmb and that will require a restart to change it. For me, I like the new look a little bit more, but for users who would like to experiment with the different GUIs, feel free to come in here and experiment with that. And that's mostly what you need to do to set up and actually play a RetroArch on this new version. So thankfully with every new version, they are updating a lot of settings, they're updating a lot of different things and making a lot of things by default, which makes the Xbox experience a lot better. From this point, once you're happy with all of your settings, we're simply gonna be coming to the configuration file. We're going to be saving the current configuration and we're going to be updating the current configuration with all of the settings we just changed in RetroArch. And just like that, your RetroArch is now set up and ready to go. Now, there is one other thing I would also recommend doing, depending on how you're using RetroArch, is to set up a mapping and network drive. Now, I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video, although I do have another video on my channel where I show you how to do that. It will basically allow you to access all of your RetroArch assets from your mapped network drive on a computer. So you can really easily transfer files from your PC without actually having to use an external drive which can help save a lot of time. And I would definitely recommend checking that out. It will help make your RetroArch experience a lot better in my opinion. And just like that, you have now set up RetroArch and you're ready to go. From this point, if you would like to see any individual videos on loading cores and playing games for specific consoles, I have a specific video on each of these on my channel. I will leave some of them linked in the description down below, including a playlist where you can go check those out. I would definitely recommend checking that out too, where I show you step-by-step -step how to use each different console. I also want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members, Bo Franks and Sean Daly. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. If you want to be shout out in future videos or see some other perks on the channel, be sure to click the join button underneath any video. I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to set up and install the latest version of RetroArch as of September 2021. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to support me, be sure to drop a super thanks in this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.